I write a song, obviously I see it, it, it lyrically in my mind, but to actually physically see it, see it manifest was really cool. Um, just standing behind the camera with Adam and, and, and watching the actors and the actresses, you know, and reading the script at the same time, following the action and seeing it happen uh, was really cool. Finding the locations for Invotive Light, it was important to me to find places that actually had a history that felt haunted, like our forest location. I had known stories that had happened there, so I felt it was important to use that place to kind of lend to the atmosphere. And uh, same with uh, the church location. That I had stumbled on and uh, ended up just talking to the owner one day and he had been telling me stories of things that had happened there. And so I decided that that would be a perfect location to shoot a ghost story. So despite Invotive Light being pretty lyrically abstract, um, it was actually very easy to write the script for the music video. Uh, I think the fact that it doesn't have a definite story in terms of the lyrics left it open uh, for more of an interpretation. Basically, it's about retribution from beyond the grave. There's a character the grave digger that hasn't answered for his misdeeds and so vengeful spirits make sure that he is held accountable for his actions. So generally the, uh, the, the deeds are paid for in a spiritual sense and um, I wanted to just incorporate that into the video. The only real imagery that I knew that I wanted to use was a candle. Um, it tied in with, you know, a votive, which is in the song title, um, but I wanted to ascribe some kind of supernatural power to that candle, and it in itself would basically dictate the action for the rest of the video. The collaboration process between me and Adam, the director, um, we would spend a lot of time beforehand in pre-production um, planning out the look of the film. We would listen to the song and really get a good idea of a style for the music video so that on set we were on the same page. With this particular shoot we were on a pretty tight schedule. We had originally had um, three videos slated to shoot within four days which uh, ended up being too much so we cut out one video and shot two videos in three days and uh, in Votive Light we ended up shooting in two days. In preparing for this shoot, I had to think of how to be mobile and how to work in the moonlight. So we went with LED light panels that were battery powered so that we could move them around quickly. They could simulate moonlight. We also used the Rokinon kit lenses. Um, they were very fast, very wide open, so that we could really utilize that super moon that we had that night. So originally we um, had live footage planned um, for In Vote of Light, and by that I mean like a live band footage, but we had spent so much time, you know, filming the outdoor scenes at the church and um, in the ravine that by the time it came to do the scenes, it was getting close to one in the morning. As with really any shoot, sometimes you have to um, veer off the plan and and shoot something that you didn't intend and that happened on this shoot and it actually ended up working for the best uh, what we opted to do was just feel that footage with something different and that ended up being me walking through those woods with the lantern um, you know and that ended up, for me, actually working out a lot more because it created this feeling of uh, like a Tales from the Crypt comic. Like I, I took on this Crypt Keeper type of persona where I'm following all the action that's going on. I'm kind of precursing it or I'm following it or I'm telling it. Um, 
And that's how the very end scene where I come in with the shovel and end up burying Chris, that's how that scene came about because we realized that this character was developing as the shoot went along. Um, so we were able to accomplish everything that we wanted, even if we didn't realize that's what was best at the time. I would say that my favorite location to shoot would be inside the church. Um, I really liked the symmetry that we got. I really liked the angles shooting through the pews, and I really liked using that natural firelight from the candles. Uh, that I thought was really beautiful, and I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that set. My favorite scene in the video is when. Uh, Chris, our main character, the grave digger. So he's following the spirit and he's brought to this place of sanctuary, a church. But really he's there to meet his demise. He's there to have retribution acted upon him. And I just love that uh, symbolism behind that. One of my other favorite scenes in, in Vote of Light is a uh, really subtle scene actually, but I think the subtlety is what makes it memorable, at least for me personally. Um, it's the scene where Tasha, it, who is the girl that plays the shovel victim, for lack of a better term, uh, is about to be hit by said shovel. Um, there's a moment in that frame where her eyes dart quickly and uh, she just kind of hesitates for a moment before she gets hit. And that just seemed so realistic and so like poignant to me. It was really cool. I really enjoyed seeing that scene play back. Another memorable moment, uh, I want to say an, an honorable moment in this video, was uh, when Chris, the guy who played the grave digger, uh, fell into the pit. We had dug this pit in this ravine that we were in, and it was a deep pit. Uh, we had set up some crash pads down there for him to hit. And uh, he just went stiff. It looked so good as he fell. Chris, who fell completely rigidly into this pit, as you see it in the video, did so but missed the mat entirely. And I see him fall, and then all I hear is a loud thud. <laughs> and he missed the mat, and I felt really bad. <laughs> so he took that fall and absorbed every bit of it and we kept the take <laughs> and he got up a little you know rattled from it but just not in any way phased <laughs> but that's the take that actually ended up in in the video um so yeah sorry chris <laughs> mess it up Beating? you got this chris Oops, spring you got, you got this spring. all right and action fall. Oh fuck. Working with Goolsby for me is is really easy. We're into a lot of the same things horror-wise. So collaborating with him is really easy because we speak the same language essentially um, in telling ghost stories. Working with Adam Judd uh, was nothing short of awesome. Um, Adam's a great person to work with. He he has not only his own vision, uh, but he takes the time uh, and, and makes the effort to understand your vision as well. Um, he accommodated every idea that I had as much as possible to you know translate it realistically in, into film, um, and it was great to collaborate with him.
Thank you.